you mentioned gold is so significant. I'd like to get into gold significance here. And especially when it comes to the Confederacy, their financial situation was dire because the Union, President Abraham Lincoln, they're obviously attacking the institution of slavery, which is so vital to the South's economy and really cripples them. So can you talk a little bit about the significance of gold and the South's economy and why they were so desperate to get their hands on some? Yeah, so uh, the Confederacy, when they form, is based off of this cash crop economic system of using um, enslaved labor to create cash crops to then sell uh, and export to create finished products, textiles predominantly through cotton. Uh, so the Confederacy has significant wealth. The issue for them is that that wealth is tied into their land and into the system of enslaved labor, into people. And so they don't have as much as many factories they don't have as much industrial capacity developed at that point uh, in the 1860s and they also don't have as much mineral wealth and so their wealth is tied into land which is being conquered during the war and it's tied into slaves which are being targeted in the war for emancipation so a big reason abraham lincoln pushes for emancipation in the civil war is so that uh, it is used as a war measure to weaken the Confederacy. That's the justification he keeps giving. That's how the Emancipation Proclamation as an executive order is accomplished. It's a war measure to weaken the enemy, the Confederacy. And so uh, they target systematically through the Confiscation Acts and through the Emancipation Proclamation, the Confederacy's ability to wage war economically through that system of enslavement. Uh, and they're doing that because the Confederacy has no mineral wealth. So uh, when the Civil War begins, the United States Treasury has $73 million in gold in its, in its coffers. The Confederacy has a total treasury of a half million dollars when the war begins. They have no money. They have no hard currency. And they need to use hard currency to buy weapons abroad, build ships abroad, get supplies abroad. They're, you can't use credit. They have no paper money value. So they need to pay hard currency to actually get these things from overseas. And they have none. And so it's a real problem for the Confederacy. Hence why when they realize that there are ships carrying gold, mysteriously, those ships become a target for the Confederate Navy. Yeah, I mentioned in my intro that whoever has the bigger treasury has the bigger stick, meaning guns, ships, things of that nature, obviously. And there's an interesting um, illustration in your book, a little political cartoon that I found pretty funny. And it was sort of this, this fight between Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln, and they were fighting with these sacks or whatever. And the sacks represented their treasuries, their respective treasuries. And Abraham Lincoln had this big sack and, and uh, Jefferson Davis's was real tiny. And it, it kind of showed in comedic terms the disparities between their two treasuries. I thought that was a pretty interesting political cartoon that really showed kind of the dire financial situation of the Confederacy and the difference between the two. But the Confederacy realizes their need for physical currency, mineral wealth, gold, things of that nature. So what are their plans in terms of the West, which is producing all the gold, you know, Nevada, California, Arizona? What are their plans and aspirations to, to get control of this gold? There is an effort by the Confederacy to seize the lands where all of this mineral wealth is directly. Um, in 1861, the southern half of modern day New Mexico and Arizona, what is styled the Arizona Territory, secedes from the United States and joins the Confederacy as a territory. And when they do this, the Confederate government realizes this goes all the way to the Colorado River. And there are people as far as Tucson, Arizona, claiming they want to be part of this Confederacy. And so, you know, a Confederate leader, Henry Sibley, goes to Jefferson Davis, the Confederate president, and basically says, let me go try and capture all this land and I will make it happen. And so Jefferson Davis gives us blessing and Sibley creates a small army in Texas and marches into Arizona. And in 1862, there's a series of campaigns and battles in Arizona where the Confederates seize Santa Fe, seize Albuquerque, seize the rest of New Mexico territory, 
And their goal is to then either march north into Colorado or march west into California because there's gold in Colorado and there's gold in California. And to create this sort of Confederate uh, expansionist empire continentally. And uh, so they have these ambitions to seize this land directly. Now, the United States, of course, has a role to play in stopping that. And U.S. volunteers from Colorado, U.S. volunteers from California, and regular army soldiers in New Mexico and Arizona who are left there when the war starts all sort of band together and do a big pincer movement to trap Sibley and get him kicked out of all this and sent back to Texas. So uh, the Confederates do make a major effort to seize these Western lands, uh, but it does not develop into anything substantial. So this uh, this plan to, to take the land in the West, they didn't get any gold from it. It just was an utter failure. Yeah, so they uh, did not have any gold developed. Um, there were mines in New Mexico and Arizona, but they did not produce very much gold. There's much more um, copper in that area and so on. So uh, they didn't get their hands on. There were not wagons full of gold being carried back to Texas, so to speak. Uh, uh, it would have taken developments. Now, what's interesting is that later on in the war, uh, the United States does discover gold in modern-day Arizona, the northwestern part, and they're going to eject all of the Navajo that live in that land and force them to relocate to another part of New Mexico and what becomes the long walk of the Navajo, uh, which is essentially their equivalency of the Trail of Tears for that tribe. And so, uh, and that then gets developed in for mining purposes after the war. So uh, even during the conflict, they're making discoveries and uh, it's affecting peoples all across the area, indigenous peoples and Americans and Confederates all over. Thank you.